It used to be that cars would have a name. You'd have the Toyota Highlander, or the, even the Tercel. And then you'd get things like RAV4, which still sort of had a name and a number. Now it seems like names of vehicles are devolving into just letters and numbers. You've got, what, R2-D2, CHF, HRV. I don't really understand what it's all supposed to mean, you know. We really don't understand what the name of this CHR means. But let's take a look at the vehicle and see if we understand what it's all about. The design of this CHR is gonna be polarizing. You've got a really funky looking vehicle and I do give Toyota credit for stepping outside the box. There's really interesting lines, there's really interesting design elements. You start to look and wonder if the design is gonna impact the functionality. Around the side, this really becomes clear. You've got this nice sculpted quarter panel here. It's drawn in to really create an athletic look. You've got a no door handle on this rear door. But the design element here of this door handle itself just doesn't look like it fits with anything else. It looks tacked on and it's a little awkward to grab the handle up here anyway. So you've got the design elements impacting the functionality. You've also got a really small rear window and a really large D-pillar, which I bet is gonna impact visibility. There's really no way, I mean, I'm basically touching, sitting on the seat here, touching the, seat, the roof at the same time. This isn't gonna be comfortable to ride in, and it sure is gonna be dangerous going over bumps. As you walk around and start to get to the back, it just, the design starts to kind of lose me. You've got two spoilers here. You've got this really weirdly sloped back window. And you've also got some tacked on design elements. Like why does this light stick out this far from it? it? There's just a lot of stuff here that doesn't make sense. There's definitely some aerodynamic work that's been done here. You've got these, these lips, you've got a couple of air canards on the side. They've actually done some design to make the air move over this well, but in terms of design, it just is on the border of funky just to be funky. Okay, so this thing looks small from the outside, but a lot of times a car looks small but then you get in and there's a ton of space. This one, not so much. And one of the biggest things we're noticing is this seat doesn't go down far enough. I'm six foot three, and the whole idea of getting a crossover is to getting a taller vehicle. Being six foot three, I've barely got any headroom, even in the front seat on this. And if you look at how much space is below this seat, there's just an incredible amount of room that could have allowed the seat to go lower, but this is as far down as it goes. I get what they're trying to do is get you up to have more visibility, but for a taller person like me, it just makes you feel cramped in here. There's quite a few of these smaller SUVs, CUV, crossover, whatever you want to call it, on the market. And I really just don't understand what this is trying to fill. You know, if you want a small car for the city, why would you get a quote unquote truck like this or something that's trying to be a truck. Essentially the styling of this to make it into what looks like a crossover just makes it a little less stable by making it taller. And the design elements and the you know style of a truck makes it a little bit bigger on the outside than if this were a small car. So it just strikes me as a bit of an odd type of vehicle. It doesn't have a ton of room in the back seat. I tried to get back there and just standing still, I almost injured myself. I can't imagine going over a bump. I would immediately hit my head on the on the roof, even on a small bumps. You know, if you're gonna have a four-door vehicle, I understand a lot of times it's gonna be kids riding back there, but why would you have a four-door vehicle where the back seat, whether or not you're a fan of the funky design on the outside, there's a carryover to some funky design on the inside. Some of the materials aren't that great, but what this shows is that you can actually style some of those materials to look cool. You've got a really cool diamond pattern on the door cards, which is carried over into the headliner here. You know, the materials themselves are cheap, but they kind of look a little cool. And there's a trend in architecture and design of repurposing or using cheaper materials in sort of a high style kind of way. And they've done that here with the interior, which we actually appreciate. You know, it's a way that you can keep the cost down without making it look cheap.
Now it's one thing to have a funky look on the interior, but there is a lot of missing content here. Don't have a lot of the safety features, no blind spot monitors, no collision alert, nothing like that. There is a backup camera which pops up in your rear view mirror, which is kind of cool. But in terms of features, you're no Android Auto, no Apple CarPlay. You don't even have satellite radio here. And our test vehicle here is $24,000 on the sticker. It's really a lot of money without a lot of features. And, you know, if you're going to save money on the materials, you would think that you'd be able to afford to put some of the features in. It's just seems to miss the mark. There's some other competitors out there that you can get at this price point and get a lot of those features now. Normally you might think, well, that's all right. I can just get those as an option. Well, that's not really the case here. This is the XLE Premium. This is supposedly the top of the line and there's really no other packages that you can get with this. So this is missing content at a bit of a high price point and you can't even add it as an option. There's a couple other issues we got with the interior here. The USB port is up in the center here underneath the dash, which is actually a pretty convenient spot for it but the 12 volt power outlet is actually in the armrest here. So if you're using a device, a radar detector or a camera or something on your windshield, you've got a, a cord running all the way across to your center console. And there's really no wire management to get out of the center console with your cord. So it's actually kind of pinching your cord. You know, it would be much more convenient to have both the USB and the 12 volt outlet in the center here. Power comes from a two liter, four cylinder, non-turbo, 144 horsepower. You know, for a small vehicle like this, it still weighs over 3,000 pounds and it does not feel very quick at all. It definitely is a sluggish vehicle. It doesn't help that it's got a CVT. Now, there's a lot of programming to make gears on this, but it's all programming. It's the computer telling it to hold a gear longer. But you do at times feel that CVT creeping in where there's a bit of a rubber band feel between your foot and the acceleration. Fuel mileage with this setup is 27 city, 31 highway, which is kind of okay-ish, but with obviously a lot of hybrids and other options out there, it's starting to get to be where it's not very good efficiency. You know, one feature that is starting to become more available on cars these days is a hold feature. So when you let off the brake at a light, the car doesn't start moving, which is the way I think they should be. But you have to put it in that mode every time you start it. You can't default to that mode. And again, and I don't know why, Toyota insists on putting little warning lights for everything on the dashboard. When you turn auto hold on, a light comes on to tell you it's in that mode. And then another light comes on to tell you that it's actually holding. So you've got a double warning light for a feature that, in my opinion, should just be there to begin with. You know, getting back to some of the missing safety features, you know, you say, oh, well, it doesn't have blind spot monitors. That's not that big a deal. But with the design of this thing, these rear windows, are tiny and there's a huge D pillar. So you've got terrible visibility when you try to look over your shoulder, even on your offside here, you look over and there's just a tiny window to look through. You know, if you're gonna have a design that makes the visibility tight like that, you should have the feature of blind spot monitors. So what do we think of this CHR? Well, when I first saw press photos of this, I was actually really excited. It looked like a fun, funky, interestingly designed vehicle that kind of fill the need to have a smaller compact crossover, almost like a hatchback. Now that we've spent some time with it, that design actually ends up impacting how you can use it. And the lack of features for the money, $24,000 for essentially a base vehicle, I'm really starting to wonder what this CHR is all about and who is the real buyer for it. You know, for a $24,000 price point, to have a vehicle that lacks this many features. I know Toyota is extremely popular, but you have to wonder if this is really gonna succeed or if this is gonna be another Toyota Solara, one of the forgotten models.